stick a move in the ring. You can hit me with the words you fling. Uh, what did you go to three year point? A lot of things, honestly, but um, a couple of things. I was I was a little nervous during before this fight. Um, a couple of things personally that were going through my head. Just um, it was it was really cool to be able to face a change of opponent, short camp. Um, Ilya is definitely dangerous. He he had a, something to do with that as well. Um, but it was nice. Uh, it was nice to be able to feel that challenge, be able to step up and perform the way I did. Obviously, it's it's you know on the business side of things, it's nice to get the interim belt. But you guys know me better than that. It's uh, not about having a little piece of gold. It's about getting my belt back from Tank High. But I had to pass this challenge first, and the way I did it, I was very proud of myself uh, and, you know, channeling all the, the training and info I'm getting from, from my guys, my team, it's, uh, that meant a lot. If you guys know me, you know things like that matter more to me than any of the other stuff like belts and money and all that. How special was it to fight inside the legendary Lumpini boxing stage in there in Thailand? That was... Um, Definitely a bucket list check off. I don't, I don't have a bunch of uh, check boxes that need to be checked in life. That was one of them. That's a really cool one. Um, probably would have loved to get a knockout, but I'm glad I was in Lumpini and been able to get a submission and show them a little something they're not used to seeing maybe in the stadium. So that was cool. Um, hopefully I can uh, open their eyes up to jujitsu and how awesome that is and you know how you know, how, how cool it is even from somebody who's, who's not the, the best in the world at it. Take us through that finishing sequence. It seems like you got him really mm -hmm. off guard with that quick finish. Yeah, can you share uh, that your, what was going through your mind uh, during that time? Yeah, I've got a, a ton of great coaches around me, but a spotlight on obviously 50-50 and Ronnie Hall and my buddy that's here cornering me, friend, coach, you know, all of that stuff. Um, but that's his position. I mean, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get better and better in that position and very confident in, in those areas and who better to learn it from than the man from it. So uh, y'all go check out his instructional. He'll, uh, he'll appreciate that shout out, <laughs> give him some money. But uh, you'll learn some shit, I promise you. Um, but it's, uh, no, honestly, it's just, it's great to be able to, to channel that and to prove to myself that, you know, being good at martial arts means you can learn other things fairly quickly and, you know, hard work is what gets you there. So without that, no amount of cheat codes and, and secret moves or whatever uh, will get you there. But luckily, I've got a group around me that's teaching me things the right way and teaching me how to approach jujitsu the right way. Uh, teaching me how to approach fighting the right way and obviously you guys know I'm, I'm a little close with my brother uh, he, he uh, honestly he, he taught me the shot that set up his shot to take me down and I don't really give a damn about getting taken down anymore thanks to everybody around me but um, I get to do stuff like that and come forward and bring the heat and do some damage so you turn into a wrestler and cool I get to do some awesome shit on the ground too And most of your fights, you finished it via knockout. How different was it for you to, in a way, win in the submission, through submission now and securing the tap out in this fight? We were just talking about that backstage, actually. Um, you know, I, I still like hitting people. That's a really good feeling. You know, it comes from my roots and and my Taekwondo background. But man, it really feels um, it feels good to 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 rip a limb off. You know, um, obviously. Uh, quick, you know, like uh, thoughts when my heart goes out to, to Ilya, hope he heals quick and gets back in there and, and knocks a bunch of people out. But personally and selfishly, that shit felt good too. Dan, we've mentioned Tang Kai, obviously, now that you're the interim world champion. A possible fight with Tang Kai is possibly in, in, in the works. When do you want that fight and what will you do differently? In your rematch against him? Uh, we want it quick. I mean, um, obviously, I'm going to take my time, spend time with my family, reassess, but 
quick for me might be different than quick for y'all. So what I mean by quick might mean have a different definition. But we're going to turn around, and you know I don't stop training. So we'll start working towards the Tankai rematch so I can get my actual belt back. Um, and do round six since we've got a, an ugly, disgusting, nasty, unfinished fight that we've got to finish. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited to get back in there. He's obviously very, very good. Um, fight's going to look a little differently, so we'll, uh, we'll let you see when the time comes. And do you feel that you've, in a way, evolved as a mixed martial artist, especially with the submission with tonight? Can you say that one more time? Do you feel that you've evolved as a mixed martial artist, especially with the submission finish that you just had tonight? For sure, for sure. Um, I didn't need this to know that. Um, I know that because, you know, I have, like I said, the team around me that that puts me through real rounds and real feels and, and there's no sugarcoating things. And, you know, the, the level of training partners that are in my camps with uh, at home with Mid City MMA, Libros MMA. Uh, you know, I got, you guys know I travel oh, every couple of weeks to 5050 in Virginia, Falls Church, Virginia. Um, those guys out there, that team out there with Ryan and his guys, and, and the amount of people that they bring in for camp. You know, uh, he introduced me to Corey Sanhagen. He introduced me to to uh, Louis. I'm not even going to try to murder your last name, but you know who you are from TriStar, buddy. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> but, you know, those guys for this camp were, were amazing, and being able to get phenomenal rounds and real high-level rounds with these black belts is just it's awesome. It's, it's unmatched. Uh, and that's my validation, if you want to call it that. Um, but I, I understand where I'm at because of the team around me and how much I trust them. But, yeah, getting a sub and a fight, if I got to pick one, it would have been that exact setup. Under a, a monster striker, he would have done what I would have done to somebody under me attacking legs. We've seen how that has gone, and he was going to try the same exact thing. And, you know, we work our way through things like that, and we pay attention to uh, the dangers and how jiu-jitsu and, and me and my team's, I guess, uh, understanding of it should be approached because... Uh, you know, we make sure that we can't get hammers dropped on us and then we can work towards the things that we're looking for. Dan, can you say that you're at, at this moment, that you're at the best version of yourself at this stage? Yeah, no question. Uh, but everybody says that when they're a little older and on the backside of their career, like, oh, I'm 38, I feel the best I've ever felt, and I'm the fastest and I'm healthy and mentally strong. but. I am, I don't know what to tell you. It's the, it's the truth, you can believe me or not, or it can be Instagram cliche or not, but that's how I feel. Um, I'm only getting better. Like it, in literally every aspect, you know, it's not like I'm getting a little slower, but more powerful, or, but I understand martial arts better. It's just all around, I think I'm just trying to approach training the right way and listen to the guys that know what they're talking about and, and try to sort through the information the right way and you know of course you're going to make mistakes and do things wrong and try to make it better but that's that's martial arts that's being a martial artist you know I don't I don't really think I'm a fighter I'll fight you but I don't think I'm a fighter I'm a martial artist that's what I think I do best and that's why I do it every day and all day and I like it I love it this is this is my life and I say this in every interview but you know, martial arts. <laughs> Last on my head, Dan, how do you plan on celebrating this win? And any message to your fans back home in Louisiana? Oh, to the fans, everybody. I, I can't even begin to go through my phone yet, but thank you guys so much. You know, I love you. Um, I love the support. Um, I feel it way out here on the other side of the world, which is kind of cool I get to do this, and it's because of you guys, and so thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I definitely forgot the first part of your question. What was that? Oh, where you going to celebrate this oh, year? Boring, very boring. I'm going to hang out with my family, and that's it. <laughs> Are we boring? <laughs> definitely. Anyway, <laughs> enjoy the night. <laughs> 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 New interim point, featherweight MMA champion. Finally, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have a few media.
Ton, you said earlier that you had some some personal issues ahead of the fight. Could you reveal anything? Yeah, not um, personal issues. I didn't have any problems. It was a great camp. Um, just, you know, um, things that go through your mind. Like, oh, this guy's young. He's been doing martial arts forever, military background. Like, you know, nice and scary. He knocked out Martin relatively quick. I, I didn't do that. I knocked him out in the third round. Um, you know, he took some damage. You know, he's got no quit in him. Um, I didn't think I, I was going to be able to get him to tap. Like, I thought he was just going to let it go and then stand up and try to fight me again. You know what I mean? Um, but that's a, that's a thing. I felt the nerves before the fight. Um, things like age get in your head. And you're like, oh, I'm a little older. Am I slower? Or am I not as good? Am I not in my prime? Like, I feel like I am. But you've, you've got to prove it to yourself sometimes. And I try to do that every day. And, you know, we don't take any easy routes or cut any corners. So I think that's important to... To you know, when you get, when you answer to the man in the mirror, I can lie to to all of my guys around me. You know, they, I've got such a good track record of doing things the right way. I can cut some corners and then still tell them I didn't, and it's okay. They'll believe me because I've got a good track record. But there's there's that, and then there's doing it because you know it's the right thing, and that's what I'm trying to pass on to my kids and my students and things like that. Like. You don't cut corners because it doesn't matter what everybody else thinks. It matters what you think. And if you're not the hardest judge, then, then we've got a problem and we've got to reassess that. And I, I think those things kind of pop through your head and I'm kind of going on a little fucking tangent. But, uh, you know, that's important to me. That was a big piece of this camp and I think I've uh, made some big steps mentally. Um, so that's that's big, big problem for y'all. Ilya told me ahead of the fight that he thought you were going to shoot on him and take the fight to the ground. Mm -hmm. But he shot on you, and then you submitted him. When you when you got the tab, did you feel it rip? Yeah. Um, so he's a dog. We know this. Like he's got a dog, and we say that a lot. But uh, the first rip, it, it was some popping and crunching and some some damage for sure. Um, he was like, I could tell in his attitude and his feel. He was like, Nah, that's, that's not going to be enough. You're not going to make me quit. So he came through again. Um, and just understanding that he wasn't, he wasn't going to go anywhere. You were staying in this position because I'm, I'm making us stay in this position. That's what, that's the benefit of 50-50. Like, it's not equal if I bust my ass there and you don't, and I understand it better than you do. We might look equal, but you don't get to leave, which is, a, is you know, some of the stuff, maybe I'm talking too much, Ryan, I'm sorry. But, uh, you know, that's, that's some of the stuff that, that Ryan has instilled in me, and, that's part of that position, and we went through again, and I was like, fine, we'll take it even further. Um, and I took it as, as almost as far as I could, and um, it, it definitely did some damage. So my thoughts are out to him, and I hope he's not out for too long, but it's, 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 it's rough. Yeah. Well, the Tankai rematch, that's what's obvious, right, for everybody. Yep. Um, and you guys faced off. What'd you see? Same Tankai. Like, Awesome competitor. Uh, he's going to come ready to fight, obviously. Um, he's going to be smart with his game plan still. I can feel it. Um, but that's what he should do if he wants to keep that belt. But he's not because we're going to go out there and we're going to take it from him. How different will it be? You know, what do you envision? Uh, the look of the fight is going to be completely different. Um, every, yeah, I, I'm not even going to say what, I, what just popped into my head. but. Uh, I made some bad decisions in that fight. Uh, he also did some very good things. Um, doesn't matter what good things he does next time, I'm going to make some great decisions. I'm going to fight better that night, and I'm going to beat him up and take that belt. Would you like to fight him in the ring? Um, I don't really care. I, I like MMA in a cage. I just think that's what MMA is in the circle. Um, I would have rather this fight in the circle. But Lumpini comes with the ring, so guess what? We got that box checked off, so I'm happy about that. No complaints. But yeah, let's let's do it in the circle. Yeah, I asked you about the ring and how effective it is for people that like to kick. Yeah. You know, it's open, wide yeah. open for them, and yeah. it, you know, it, I guess your arsenal would be, you know, better yeah. in the ring. Yeah, yeah, so we're uh, we're gonna always adapt, but um, things like uh, cornering, um, I think we're. Uh, a benefit to be in the ring for somebody with his style, right? He's, he's used to that, that, that kickboxing style that he practices and, and is really good at. Where do they do it at? They do it in the ring. Um, but we do MMA, and uh, we got belts and shit on the line, so 
Let's do it in the cage. Yeah, he's fully recovered. You don't look like you have a scratch on you. When do you feel like, what is a target date? Because, you know, you got Qatar in December. They want to put five title fights on that. Yeah, that, uh, Qatar is, is appealing, but uh, I've got things I've got to take care of with the family. You know, when you go through this career, you put a lot of things on hold. Uh, we've been doing this for a long time, and I put a lot of things on hold. And I, you know, I don't want to say uh, regret, because they would sacrifice that for me, for me to chase my dreams and try to take care of my family, no question. But that's why I want to not. I want to give them that time back. So we'll take our time. Um, you know, no, no outside pressure is ever going to affect me. Y'all know me better than that. Uh, so we'll go reassess in the next week or two. Y'all will hear my thoughts on it. Um, but we'll, I do want to get back in here quick. We ain't doing another year break. That is not happening. So we'll get back in here and uh, think about it, make sure the time frame is right, see if we can get that, if not Qatar, because that's pretty quick, maybe in the States, and get that hometown crowd bussing. So 2024, maybe. All right, man. Congratulations, man. It was an incredible performance. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so last year you uh, you faced one of your very rare career losses and possibly the biggest loss of your career. Um, I'd, I'd like to get into your, your mindset after that fight and kind of leading into this one because you also took a, a year break, which is, uh, is very long for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, those things on paper do look really negative, you know. Um, but if you approach things the right way, if you're not a fighter, more of a martial artist, I think um, those things are always good for you. The more time you give, you know, me and my team, the guys that are close to me, and um, even in their careers or my career, like it's, it's the, the more time we have, the worse it is. I love that these things are always on the line because I get five rounds to figure you out. We're about to do round six with Tang Kai. Like, Man, you're in trouble. It's too much time. It's it's too much up here. This this is my most powerful weapon. This is the machine. Like this is what's gonna pick you apart. It'll translate through this, but that's the more time, the better, baby. So uh, that's always a good thing. Um, and the first part of your question, I missed that. Um, I think you answered it. Okay. <laughs> cool. Uh, so oh, the loss. No, I want to say this for me, not yeah, y'all. Yeah. But the loss. Like you guys don't understand. Ty, this is for you at home too, with winning, losing football games. Like, I learned from, you learn from losses. I am grateful, truly, from the bottom of my heart for that loss. I'm a better martial artist because of it. And anything that makes me better, I'm grateful for. If I go out there and trip on the curb, but it makes me a better martial artist and I blow my knee out, I am grateful for that. You have to, you have, to have that attitude in life. You have to have that attitude in competition. All right, I'm done. Um, so you're hesitant to give like a date for your next fight. Um, do you think you could fight before the end of the year? And do you kind of feel now at this point in your career that time is fleeting, or are you you patient? No, time is not fleeting, man. I I'm up there in age. Like it's a it's for real a number. Shout out Aaliyah. Like I I just <laughs> I uh, I I am. Better than ever. Do you give me more time? I am going to be better and better and better. Like, I don't know when this is going to start to do this, but it hasn't yet. So the more time, the better. Um, but we're in October. I don't know. December, you know, we'll take a look. We'll take a look. I'm not going to give you a date because, you know, you'll quote me on that and all that shit. So I don't know. But I'm going to do my best to try to make it happen as quickly as possible. But... Uh, like other fighters, like you don't get to pick the time frame. You've been out for a while. I get to pick the time frame. So I'm going to do my best to get in there as soon as possible. Trust me, I want to do this. And last question for me. Um, but, you know, after your, your long break, uh, to come all the way to Thailand and fight for 60 seconds, was there part of you that wished you could have, uh, you know, stand and bang with this guy for? for no, years? man, Ilya's good. He's scary. He's got, he, you know, he'll... It'll, it'll put some hurting on you. You can't let him just go out there and be comfortable and do his thing. So, no, of course I'm glad we got out there early. I, mission accomplished, right? Um, or at least part of it. But, um, like I said before, it's not just about this. It's about how I did it, the things that were running through my head before, what I felt here, family at home, like the way I went in there and, and the techniques that I used and 
it couldn't have it couldn't have played out better. So no, I'm very grateful. I, you know, I'm, I'm as positive as I could possibly be uh, about things in life now, and that's one of the situations. Congrats, thanks for that. Thank you, thank you. Hello everybody, Dom Lau here from One Championship. You are tuned into the best damn martial arts news outlet anywhere in Asia. SCMP Martial Arts, baby. Give them a follow.